China's first high-speed railway started operating in 2008 between Beijing and Tianjin. Since then, the country has built a network that spans nearly 40,000 kilometers (25,000 miles) and is now the world's largest for bullet trains that can travel up to 350 kilometers per hour (220 miles per hour). Over the past decade, China has built 25,000 kilometers of dedicated high-speed railway, more than the rest of the world combined. The high-speed rail (HSR) network in the People's Republic of China (PRC) is the world's longest and most extensively used, with a total length of 42,000 kilometers (26,000 miles) by the end of 2022. The HSR network encompasses newly built rail lines with a design speed of 200 to 350 kilometers per hour (120 to 220 miles per hour). China's HSR accounts for two-thirds of the world's total high-speed railway networks. Almost all HSR trains, track, and service are owned and operated by the China Railway Corporation under the brand China Railway High Speed (CRH). High-speed rail developed rapidly in China since the mid 2000s. CRH was introduced in April 2007, and the Beijing-Tianjin Intercity Rail, which opened in August 2008, was the first passenger dedicated HSR line. Currently, the HSR extends to all provincial-level administrative divisions in Hong Kong SAR, with the exception of Macau SAR. The HSR network reached just under 38,000 kilometers (24,000 miles) in total length by the end of 2020. The network is getting bigger, with plans to extend it to 50,000 kilometers by 2025 and 200,000 kilometers by 2035. Notable HSR lines in China include the Beijing-Guangzhou High-Speed Railway, which at 2,298 kilometers (1,428 miles) is the world's longest HSR line in operation, and the Beijing-Shanghai High-Speed Railway, with the world's fastest operating conventional train services. The Shanghai Maglev is the world's first high-speed commercial magnetic levitation (Maglev) line, whose trains run on non-conventional track and reach a top speed of 430 kilometers per hour (267 miles per hour). In 2020, China started testing a maglev prototype train that runs at 600 kilometers per hour (373 miles per hour) and planned a 2025 launch date. Economically, there were initial concerns, particularly outside China. Over the high-speed rail's cost, debt, and profitability. However, a Paulson Institute research had estimated that the net benefit of the high-speed rail to the Chinese economy to be approximately $378 billion and an annual return on investment at 6.5 percent. In 2021, China's state railway company have also vowed to prioritize in reforms that aims to improve the productivity and efficiency of its high-speed rail network, rather than focus on the expansion of track mileage. A 2019 World Bank study estimated the rate of economic return of China's high-speed rail network to be at 8%, which is well above the opportunity cost of capital in China for major long-term infrastructure investments. The study also noted a range of benefits, which included shortened travel times, improved safety, and better facilitation of tourism, labor, and mobility, as well as reducing highway congestion, accidents, and greenhouse emissions as some automobile travelers switch from car use to rail. The institution also found a broad range of travelers of different income levels choose HSR for its comfort, convenience, safety, and punctuality. High-speed rail in China is officially defined as newly built passenger dedicated rail lines designed for electrical multiple unit (EMU) train sets traveling at not less than 250 kilometers per hour (155 miles per hour), including lines with reserved capacity for upgrade to the 250 kilometers per hour (155 miles per hour) standard. On which initial service operated not less than 200 kilometers per hour (124 miles per hour). EMU train sets have no more than 16 railcars with axle load not greater than 17 tons and a headway of three minutes or less. Thus, high-speed rail service in China requires high-speed EMU train sets to be providing passenger service on high-speed rail lines at speeds of not less than 200 kilometers per hour (124 miles per hour). EMU trains operating on non-high speed track or otherwise, but at speeds below 200 kilometers per hour (124 miles per hour), are not considered high speed rail. Certain mixed-use freight and passenger rail lines that can be upgraded for train speeds of 250 kilometers per hour (155 miles per hour) with current passenger service of at least 200 kilometers per hour (124 miles per hour) are also considered high speed rail.
In 2014, high-speed rail expansion gained speed with the opening of the Taiyuan Izin, Hangzhou Ichangsha, Lanzhou Yurumki, Guiyang Guangzhou, Nanning Guangzhou trunk lines and intercity lines around Wuhan, Chengdu, Qingdao, and Zhengzhou. High-speed passenger rail service expanded to 28 provinces and regions. The number of high-speed train sets in operation grew from 1,277 pairs in June to 1,556.5 pairs in December. In response to a slowing economy, central planners approved a slew of new lines including Shangqiu Hafei Hangzhou, Zhengzhou Wanzhou, Lianyungang Zhenjiang Lianyi Tsufu, Harbin Mudunjiang, Yinchuanqian, Dadongjiang Jiaqo, and intercity lines in Zhejiang and Jiangxi. The government actively promoted the export of high-speed rail technology to countries including Mexico, Thailand, the United Kingdom, India, Russia, and Turkey. To better compete with foreign trainmakers, the central authorities arranged for the merger of the country's two main high-speed trainmakers, CSR and CNR, into CRRC. By 2015, six high-speed rail lines, Beijing, Tianjin, Shanghai, Nanjing, Beijing, Shanghai, Shanghai, Hangzhou, Nanjing, Hangzhou and Guangzhou, Shenzhen, Hong Kong report operational profitability, 129, the Beijing Shanghai is particularly profitable reporting a 6.6 .6 billion yuan net profit. In 2016, with the near completion of the National 4 plus 4 grid, a new mid to long term railway network plan was drafted. The plan envisions a larger 8 plus 8 high-speed rail grid serving the nation and expanded intercity lines for regional and commuter services for large metropolitan areas of China. The proposed completion date for the network is 2030. Since 2017, with the introduction of the Fuxing series of trains, a number of lines have resumed 350 km per hour operations such as Beijing, Shanghai HSR, Beijing, Tianjin ICR, and Chengdu, Chongqing ICR. The HSR network reached 37,900 kilometers, 23,500 miles, in total length, by the end of 2020. In 2025, the HSR network will reach a total length of 50.000 kilometers and will grow further. Published by CGTN, China plans to build more than 3,000 kilometers of railways in 2023, including 2,500 kilometers of high-speed lines, to upgrade the transport system into an advanced network. China State Railway Group Company, Limited, China Railway, announced on Sunday. In 2023, China Railway will enhance the links among different levels of railways and fill gaps along railway routes in order to accelerate the construction of rail infrastructure to boost the economy and benefit the society. Construction of multiple key projects including the Sichuan Tibet Railway in the country's southwest region will be accelerated, said the company in an online announcement. In 2022, China Railway achieved its goals by completing 710.9 billion yuan, $104.8 billion, of fixed asset investment, and it also built 4,100 kilometers of new railways including 2,082 kilometers of high-speed lines, according to the announcement. China's annual investment in fixed assets reached 57.21 trillion yuan in 2022, up 5.1% year-on-year while investment in infrastructure construction grew 9.4% year-on-year, with a 3.7% rise in roads and a 1.8% increase in railways, according to data from the National Bureau of Statistics. A Fuxing high-speed train runs on the Nankong section of the Jiangxi Shenzhen High-Speed Railway in Ganzhou City of East China's Jiangxi Province, January 10, 2023. Slash CFP at the end of 2022, the length of China's operational railways exceeded 155,000 kilometers, including 42,000 kilometers of high-speed railways, said the company announcement. Last year, 102 railway-related projects were under construction, with 26 projects being commenced and 29 projects entering commercial operation, according to the company.